Hi, so today I'm going to be taking a look at a real world cycling needle bearing kit. So this is a uh, mounting hardware for your rear shock and it uh, claims to reduce the friction and improve the small bump sensitivity on the rear shock. So it uses, as the name implies, a uh, needle bearing as opposed to the DU bushings that are generally on uh, mounting hardware for shocks. Um, so I've wanted to get one of these for a couple of years. Um, I've read quite a few reviews on uh, various forums of people who have used them and they've always been uh, positive but I've not seen many videos uh, online of people installing them and showing them in operation so I thought I'd do one. So what I'm going to do is I'll change the camera angle, we'll go into detail about what comes in the kit, uh, the tools that you need to install it, um, then I'm going to install it under my shock and then show you it in operation. So let's get started. Right so let's take a look at this kit. So first off I just wanted to say that uh, uh, Real World Cycling do this uh, system for uh, various different shocks and uh, frames and all you need to do is find out uh, what kit you need for your particular shock and frame. Now I'll be leaving a link in the description to uh, their website and it has a chart on there with all the various manufacturers and then it tells you uh, what size that you'll need for your particular setup. If it's not listed there you can contact uh, Chris at uh, Real World Cycling, he's really helpful and he'll uh, let you know what uh, kit you need for yours. I'm going to be using uh, just uh, one needle bearing kit for my upper shock on my Evil uh, because you generally don't need it for the lower one because it doesn't move as much. Um, but you can run uh, both if you want. I'm just choosing to run the single one. So let's get inside this kit. Right, so we'll start with the needle bearing itself. So it comes with this uh, little plastic cup which holds the bearings in place until it's actually installed. Then you've got the inner pins or axles. As you see there's three of them. The reason you get three is because obviously there's uh, tolerance differences. So you basically start with the uh, plus plus and see if it fits into the uh, uh, needle bearing um, smoothly. It doesn't have any uh, binding issues. If it does you just drop down to the uh, plus and then if that one is still binding a bit, you just drop down to the minus. It comes with these uh, little instructions to tell you about it. But uh, that's the reason you get three of them, so you end up with a really nice fit on the bearings. And uh, I'm not too sure what this part is. Uh, probably something to aid installing it, we'll find out. And then you've got the two spacers. You can get these uh, in different colours. I've just gone for black on mine. So here's a look at the tools that I'm going to be using. So first up I'm going to be using a handle set. Now obviously you, you don't have to use the real world cycling's handle set. You can use one of your own, uh, one that uh, obviously fits through the shock. I'm just using theirs because it's the one I have to hand. And then the tool that I'm going to be using for installing it is the needle bearing tool. Is the uh, part. I'll leave a link in the description to all the uh, tools. That's basically a two piece, as you can see, one side's for installing it and one side's for removing it. You can also uh, get a tool for removing the uh, kits, uh, the DU bushes on the uh, other mountain hardware. Right, so under the shock, so this is the uh, mountain hardware that I'm going to be replacing. So as I said, I'm going to be just doing the top and leaving the lower one in place. This is a uh, push low friction kit, in case you're wondering why the colour is different from the standard Fox one. But it's basically the same. So what you need to do is take the uh, spacers off on the side here. It'd be a, bit, a little bit fiddly to get off. But... Uh, squeeze them off and then in here you've got a little o-ring that sits just in a little recess you just need to push this uh, pin out it can be a bit stiff so you might need to uh, lean it against something and then just tap it out which is what I'm gonna have to do I think so here's the pin uh, partially out uh, the way I do it is I use a um, a 13mm uh, socket 
which I place over one side, or just one that's big enough to allow the pin to fit in. And then I use a 10 mil, and then I just push that against the pin, and then sit it in a vise, and just tighten it up until the pin obviously falls loose. There's the little washer I was talking about. And then all you need to do is take a uh, dull knife and then you need to fit it behind the bushing and work it out. So eventually the bushing will come out. Sorry, it's not shot on camera, it's a bit awkward to try and do it at this uh, angle, but you do just basically just work your way around and it will eventually come out. So once you've got all of the uh, old mountain hardware out, obviously you can keep this if it's uh, still usable. But uh, what I need to do then is just clean out the shock eyelet. Make sure there's uh, no damage on it. And then you need to put some uh, grease on it. I recommend using this uh, super coat grease by uh, Rock and Roll. Uh, to, although you can use any grease you want. A small amount into the eye like that just to help the uh, bearing go in easier. Right, so next I'm going to take the handles, just take that off, pop the tool on with the uh, correct orientation towards the shock, and I'm going to take the other end of the tool and take the needle bearing has this uh, plastic cap in and then just push it through it should make the uh, plastic cap pop out let's rest it on there and what I'm going to do is feed it in to the side of the shock there the handle through and then just tighten up so a bit of tension on it and then just a simple case of tightening the handles in to feed the bearing in that's flush you should feel it uh, bottom out and just undo it handle in. should end up with the bearing nice and flush so finally on to the inner pin or the uh, axles so as I said you've got three different uh, sizes on this so you just want the one that fits uh, without any binding issues. You have to be uh, really careful when you're doing this so you don't knock any of the uh, needles out. So I'll start with the uh, plus plus. See how that goes. Let me try that. Feels a bit tight. Don't think it's going to go. I'll give it a try. Definitely a bit too tight that one, so I'm going to try the plus. This one feels a bit better. So I'll rotate it in. You see how it rotates the needles so what you're looking for is for it to sit evenly on each side obviously for the spacer to fit on need to make sure that it 
is rotating and there's no binding inside and then we're installed here's what the DU bushings are like it's pretty smooth but uh, you can feel the friction on it here's it from a different angle so you can see that it is actually rotating and here's what the uh, RWC one looks like much less friction on it right, you can just leave it and it falls down probably be even smoother once it uh, beds in a bit here's it from another angle so you can see it's so much smoother That was a look at the Real World Cycling needle bearing kit. Now I'll be doing an update on this uh, kit once I've been using it for a little while, uh, just to tell you about my uh, thoughts and experiences of using it. But uh, if you've got any uh, comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Thumbs up are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.